Hey guys, Blackbard here, bringing you a more fleshed out build guide for a pretty decent caster. I was actually surprised at how well this did. Um, we, I decided to abandon the gear it out from scratch and just put in a bunch of my gear that I had already ground. That doesn't mean that I don't need any upgrades. I still have quite a lot of area for improvement, but um, it was a little bit quicker on to get into some of the higher damage and kind of move on with the gameplay because um, things were progressing kind of slow so what i would say is uh if you're looking to gear out especially in a beta setting uh don't start with a caster start with a melee build with bleeding edge uh and then get some gear for this and then come back to this so, so you can have some fun with it and do some higher level content instead of just doing lower lower level stuff it doesn't really feel very good uh anyway um, it does. It starts to feel really good once you start getting some pretty decent gear. So we'll get started with what we have here. So let's start with the gear. Um, basically, you're going to go with anything that's got a ton of force shield on it, and force shield as the main stat. Um, you can go with any of the main stats on here. I would probably prioritize um, wisdom or uh, ferocity probably there's my ferocity item so you can see here this is perfectly statted you got max life on it you got force shield you got ferocity health regen's okay um resistances are okay and then just put in as much force shield as you possibly can um and you'll see why here in a minute but uh here these are good as well uh, for shield regeneration rate is also really good um, you want that on as many items as possible as well as willpower regeneration is always good um, on your rings you want uh, spell damage obviously you want crit damage uh, 20 percent crit damage is probably not as good as 20 or 30 percent um, occult damage i just haven't found any that were any good yet um, so if you find occult damage get those first those are wonderful uh, sockets are always good i'm contemplating switching these sockets over from um, 10 all uh, attributes to um, uh, barrels which would be uh, stamina regeneration just for a little bit more mobility although with the changes I made last night it might not work out so well but we'll see uh, on here again you want uh, a worship artifact uh, because we are kind of bouncing back and forth between the two types of damages and this allows us to have a dagger so that we can mark stuff and it makes clearing a lot easier um, so you're going to use amethysts for the flat or for the percentage occult damage you want crit damage or occult damage and then flat to spells uh, these are all good uh, on your weapon none of the attack mods matter other than crit damage and occult damage uh, so any of those that you get and then status ailment so ailment uh, for any one of the ailment percentage chances would be good, um, although a cult would probably be the best. Uh, we already went over those. And then a thirst. Uh, I have a pretty good thirst here. You want to focus on the highest spell damage percentage and the lowest uh, maximum health reduction. None of the other stats really matter on that. The other item that I would uh, encourage you getting are the agility boots, uh, the step boots. I don't remember exactly what they're called, but they have one stamina point, and that is helpful because what we're going to try to do is actually be out of stamina as much as possible. So you're pretty much going to be dodge rolling when it comes up because it boosts our damage. You see 1794, and as we get those back, it actually goes down. So we want to have more uh, stamina points missing. And we'll, again, we'll get into that here in just a second. Your stat priority is going to be at least, I would say, enough to get up to about 10 or 15% ailment chance on spells. Um, and then the rest goes in for crit. You want to be around 30%, roughly. That would be the best. These other stats don't really matter. Life really doesn't matter. Toughness is okay, but it's it's really not that good. 
for what we're doing. You can see here we have 4,000, uh, 4 shield, 1,500 health. The majority of our stuff is going to be around 4 shield. Into our passive tree here, uh, I, I broke my scroll, scroll button so I can't zoom out. So we're just going to go over these here pretty quick. 25% uh, force shield here is pretty good here and here. And also gives us some ailment chance. Uh, resistance, so this is trying not to get stunned all the time. We're just going in for straight damage on this. And then we're coming over here for the tw um, tw 250 willpower and rage. This is just a quality of life change. Um, let's go over here. We're going to take all of these for the crit. This is really all we're getting, crit and crit damage. Don't really care about the attack damage. Flying up here through the spell damage, and then across to the leech, because this applies the leech to your force shield instead of your health. And then swinging over here so that the damage over time goes to your force shield. Um, otherwise you'll get killed by weird stuff because you don't have a whole lot of life, so poison and stuff will kill you. So this is kind of a necessary point. And you can go either way, force shield regeneration delay or spell cost, whichever way you feel is necessary. I found that this is much more useful in keeping you alive. Um, then up here we're going to swing up through force shield and max health. Um, up through to the stamina point and then I'm I tested this out and it's pretty good uh, with six points that's 18 percent uh, damage increase which uh, is very nice and it's pretty consistent so um, you don't really have to go with any of these because you don't want to be gaining stamina points uh, you just want to keep them all the time then we're going to fly up here and go to some of our favorite nodes here. This is a wonderful one. Swing up here through spell damage and come to killing effect. With ailments gives you a temporary damage boost and it is a lot of damage. You'll notice that in the video. Come up here through wisdom and uh, have the application of two types of ailments at the same time, which then again increases our overall damage. So, uh, that is the passive skill tree. Our skills here, we're gonna be focusing most of our damage on Annihilation. Um, when I've, I've gone through and tested a bunch of these, this doesn't really reduce our, our willpower uh, regeneration too much. This increases our damage so much so that this increase in damage is not as, you could probably interchange these although I think I get more damage out of this. Um, and then these two are just not very good. Turn speed, you just stop doing damage and turning around. Um, either damage switch over, not really helpful for what we're doing because we really need pierce and we really need two beams. The two beams, when they're together, are still doing double damage, so it's way better than converting over the damage. Uh, next up is going to be Mark of Impurity. When you're clearing, you're going to want to have Vulnerability on because uh, it just increases your damage quite a bit more than um, more likely, or excuse me, uh, increased critical damage. Um, and then, yeah, none of those other ones really work. And then when you're fighting a boss, you actually switch over to these five, not including increased damage from ailments because we don't do too much uh, damage from ailments and that'll slow down the target and make them easier to to uh, to keep mark up on so this will be your setup for grouping or for for uh, clearing and then when you get to the boss you just tick all of these like that so let's reset those okay so for either jump uh, we're gonna want to apply stasis um, as well as couldn't really decide between any of these. Teleport range is okay. Remove crowd control is okay. Really, whatever other two pointer you want, and then cast multiple times. I think uh, teleport range helps out a lot more because you don't find it where you're clicking too far, um, and then it doesn't jump and it gets you killed. Uh, so that's a pretty good one. Uh, the l bleeding edge here, uh, we're just using as a rage dump. So none of this stuff really matters, um, except for maybe bleed chance, which uh, you can see actually increases both your bleed and your shock, which I find interesting. 
Um, and we use this just to amp our damage and to dump a bunch of rage. Uh, and then obviously axes keep spinning and increases the rage cost. You can see it goes from a rage cost of 200 to 400, and it's way more effective like this So uh, for a rage dump because all your damage is coming out of Annihilation anyway. Uh, last but not least is going to be Winter's Grasp which I have converted over to shadow so that I can spread uh, ailments and therefore get a more effective um, uptime on our uh, ailment. Killing stuff with ailments increases your damage, um, so that'll help spread it out. Um, leaves damage on the ground, just helps add more dots of that, and then um, gives a buff to increase your damage. This is all good. Uh, nothing else really in here is terribly helpful. Um, so just stick with that. You, I guess you could go with reduce cooldown, but you, you don't really want to because it's it takes up a bit of your mana and it shuts off your your annihilation. So I would just stick with with leaves of damage on the ground. Um, anyway, let's get in and we'll do a little bit of uh, vet six. Um, I was able to clear up to Vet 6, even though I have 9 unlocked. That's from my melee. Um, effectively clear all of these up to Vet 6. At Vet 6 going into 7, it starts stuff starts hitting extremely hard, especially the bosses. So, basically, I teleport around a little bit. I pop this so I have some rage. Pop up a mark. And pop these guys dead. Lag out a little bit. And then you can see my my stuff actually pops up to about 10k. And these guys have just a regular spinner has 70k HP. Uh, use our bleeding edge up. Not a whole lot of mobs here. You can throw one of these up, and then you'll watch your damage actually increase. You can see 14, 15k from. 12k. Now the damage buffs have worn off and my damage has decreased. So now you can see 15k, 16k with your annihilation, 16k. I've seen as high as, uh, when I have marks up, seen as high as like 18k, 19k from the, uh, the actual uh, annihilation. Uh, you will see numbers higher than that because of the mark of uh, impurity explosions. Um, let's see. It's got 400k HP. Oh, delayed animation there. We'll throw up some of that. See what I mean by the vet six? Once you get to vet six, it's everything starts hitting extremely hard. Come on. I'm also distracted while trying to talk about this. So, anytime you start getting explosions like that, you better just keep moving around because you will start to get wrecked. There we go. 14Ks. I'm able to nuke them down pretty good. Pop that off. Ouch. And that's pretty much the gameplay. Once you get to the boss, it takes forever at this level because you have to avoid a lot of stuff. If you get multiple bosses or a thug, it's a real pain in the neck. But um, yeah, you can see it's pretty effective up to this point. Um, the melee builds have an advantage at a certain point because they can really take advantage of the smiles um, chess piece, whereas we really can't too much because a lot of our damage is reliant on um, this right here, uh, the killing damage boost, and it would literally take forever to kill the boss if we didn't have that, so um, not terribly effective. Um, anyway, that's pretty much the build. 
I'm going to leave it there. I'm probably going to start working on a ranged build here soon. Um, haven't seen too many people really putting out build guys lately, so I'll just keep trying to come up with stuff and uh, adapting and tweaking and trying to grind out some gear um, and see where it takes us. So, anywho, I'm glad you guys dropped by. Thanks for sticking in here till the end, and I will catch you guys later. Drop by Twitch, subscribe, follow me on Twitch, subscribe here. Shouldn't have to tell you that, but I will anyway. Um, and you guys have a, a good one. Peace out.